The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily represent those of Access Fort Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting group. Access Fort Wayne is a department of the Allen County Public Library. If you or anyone you know might be interested in making a television show, please call 260-421-1250. Hi, Dr. Rita Cashman, welcome to the show. This is the mind-body-spirit connection. What I'm really seeing is that how you think uh, affects your body through uh, neuropeptides, through hormones, neurotransmitters, uh, hitting receptors in your body, uh, and then your body speaks back to your mind. So it's mind-body, uh, uh, body-mind. Kenneth Pert uh, is the one who uh, published the original scientific data that today's subject, uh, speaking of mind, body, spirit, is very interesting. It's going to, to be uh, Indiana's road to marijuana. Yeah, I have great, I have great concerns, uh, great concerns uh, about that uh, because I have uh, read so many books, reviewed so many scientific papers now that I want to speak today a little bit about the history, about the science, a little bit about CBD, which uh, is available in a lot of businesses today. Is it safe, for example? I have a lot of concerns about that, uh, and I will be uh, speaking about that. So let me hold up a, a few books, because this is about information, scientific information. I want you to verify what I be saying, because this is very important. Your life may be at stake, okay? So one of the first books that I read, uh, is, as you can see, it's fairly large. The Health Effects of Cannabis and Cannabinoids, okay, uh, from the marijuana tree and the other chemicals that, that might be in it, uh, and uh, put out by the Academy of Sciences 2017, I believe it was. Uh, so it is completely scientific. They reviewed, uh, in essence, the world's literature. Uh, next, I read William J. Bennett's book. You know, he was... Uh, uh, under, I think, Reagan administration. He was the uh, director of uh, Health and Human Services uh, and a, a very honest uh, in, individual. And the name of it is Going to Pot. Going to Pot. Okay, remember, smoking marijuana, a lot of people get, get the munchies and they get pot bellies. Want a pot belly? Smoke pot. Okay. Why the Rush to Legalize Marijuana is Harming America. That's the name of William J. Bennett book. Uh, I think it would be an excellent read. Another one, Understanding Marijuana by Mitch Erlewine is, a, is another one. I've read all these. Uh, a number of them I've read a number of times because of previous uh, TV shows, for example. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, so I'm uh, informed about it. And uh, CBD, A Patient's Guide to Medicinal Cannabis, uh, uh, right here by Erlewine, okay, is another one that I read. Uh, another one is by uh, Gregory L. Smith, CBD, what you need to know. Uh, he uh, prescribes it a great deal, but he's honest about uh, uh, the, the side effects and, and, and everything. So it's an honest book, although he's kind of a promoter. You have to be open-minded there. And I have a couple of other books here. I also read, uh, which is uh, the Indiana State Department of Toxicology, Sheila Arlen put out a PowerPoint uh, which she presented to lawyers, uh, uh, not healthcare providers. And her main job is to educate uh, the legal and, and, and judgmental procession and, and blood testing like that. Uh, uh, excellent uh, uh, PowerPoint. Uh, so, and I read a lot more than that in scientific papers, but I wanted to give you some idea I'm coming from science here uh, because I have great concerns that our legislature in the state, the House, the Senate, and the governor signed a bill uh, and didn't really know the science themselves unless 
lobbying money carried the day. You figure it out. Uh, and uh, because the law they passed July 1, uh, for, for example, that you can buy CBD, all the stores have, have uh, uh, opened up, but there's federal law against that. Mm -hmm. If the feds want to step up to bat, uh, you could have major problems for uh, using it uh, or selling it. That's, that's federal law. I confirmed that. Uh, so that, that uh, it, 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 as a matter of fact, uh, and, the, and the other concern I, I have about it, uh, that the CBD can actually uh, have a lot of uh, uh, side effects uh, because and they don't give you a warning with that. I discussed the science of that in a uh, little bit. What about the history of marijuana? It goes back a long way, and uh, the history of uh, cannabis. I mean, we we're going back six, seven thousand years. Yeah, uh, and uh, the marijuana tree uh, has a spe has a, a, a species. Okay, uh, and, and sativa is the main plant. It's about 20 feet high. Uh, very little uh, can bother it. Uh, bacteria, viruses, funguses don't bother it much. It grows better in southern climates, uh, for example. And it spread to us, frankly, uh, uh, from uh, Asia. Uh, and uh, the leaves look uh, like a carrot uh, a knife, for example, a serrated uh, knife. Uh, you recognize about five leaves in general. Uh, the stalks are made of fiber, though. Uh, and in history, uh, they took full advantage of it, and I'll speak about that in a minute. And, and the seeds uh, are, have a lot of oil in them, and, and people in history have used them for food. Uh, then there's a flower sitting on top, and that's where the uh, CBD, the cannabinoid, uh, is, and the THC, the psychoactive component, uh, is what uh, is mainly in the flower. There's some of the stalk, uh, but mainly in the flower. Uh, and uh, so, and in history, uh, uh, it's been used as an industrial hemp, which was used in ropes, in sails. They sailed all over the world with sails uh, uh, made from the marijuana uh, tree, yes. Uh, and even the Vikings uh, use the sails and ropes are all made from the marijuana tree, yeah, from the sativa tree uh, uh, mainly. And King Henry VIII uh, in England, they were doing a lot of sailing all over the world, uh, and uh, they uh, even made the farmers uh, grow the hemp and would fine you if you didn't do it. And, and, and they recommended it even in the Americas that we devote 100 acres of land to the uh, growth but there wasn't a lot of money to be made in the U.S. from that, so the farmers really tried not to do that, but, but you know, they were forced to. And then over time, uh, they started using it uh, as medication, as a medicinal, uh, uh, all over the world. But that started a number of years later, okay? The original tree had in it uh, not much of the, psych the THC, the, the uh, uh, the psychological uh, content of it, the thing that, gets, that makes you high. So it was mainly about fiber and cloth, and eventually I used it in paper. Like a, there's another tree called indica, which is a subspecies of, of the main tree. It is sh shorter, uh, but, but it is much higher in THC. The uh, sativa is, is higher in CBD. You know, they're, they're cannabinoids. They're very similar chemically, C21, uh, H30, O2, uh, O2, extremely similar, except uh, that uh, the uh, molecules are arranged differently, okay? But they're, they're extremely similar. Uh, hemp, for example, generally is considered to be uh, uh, 0.15 or 0.7% or less uh, uh, of THC, uh, okay? Uh, but uh, first in history was the fiber. It maybe has gone back as far as 8,000 years uh, to Taiwan. That's where they think it came, it came from. Then cotton was, di was uh, discovered about 2,500 years ago, uh, and they started using cotton more, and it was in competition uh, with the uh, uh, hemp. Uh, in China, uh, they would use uh, uh, the uh, hemp 
and bow and arrows. Yeah, remember the Chinese traveled all the world with the bow and arrows, uh, uh, and and they were very good at it. And it was mainly a hemp a product. The Chinese had bow strings. It was better than bamboo. It was better than bamboo. And then southern Russia started growing it a, a lot, where it's a little bit warmer in southern Russia. Uh, and it was uh, a, another plant, Rastega, I think they called it, which was even smaller. Uh, and in the seventh century, southern Russia sort of dominated the hemp uh, industry. Uh, uh, and in and about 200 BC, uh, a lot of hemp was grown in Greece and, and sold to France, uh, mainly as ropes. In, uh, in, in Vienna, uh, in Venice, uh, they were known for their hemp sales, uh, hemp ropes, uh, and they were very good at it. Then King Henry VIII decreed every farm had to grow uh, about 100 acres of, of, of hemp. Isn't that uh, interesting? Uh, uh, in, in New England, he even had rope walks <laughs> where he could walk along and look at the farms and the trees uh, for uh, exercise. And the slave trade had a lot to do with it. Uh, the slaves were traded more commonly from Africa and, and uh, were slaves on farms that uh, grew marijuana. Yeah, it wasn't just the sugar, the booger, and the hooker. <laughs> okay, let's have a little humor today. Okay, and Kentucky, uh, frankly, grew a lot of it also. And, and you notice that some of the congressmen now are promoting nationalization of marijuana uh, because they are going to grow a lot of this in their state and make their money. Watch out for, watch out for that. I noticed John Boehner, a former Speaker of the House, he's now on, on a board of a company promoting uh, marijuana. Yeah, would you believe it? I mean, would, uh, would you be, uh, believe it when you think of the whole thing? Uh, and uh, uh, so, uh, again, uh, the seeds are uh, even edible. They even have uh, 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 hemp seed cookbooks, yes, because the proteins in hemp are, are healthier. The omega-3 fats, so uh, uh, they are uh, healthier. Uh, so the history of medical mar marijuana using as medicine is also extensive, but it, it was more sooner. Maybe 2,700 years ago or so, we start using it as medicinals. Uh, there are no antibiotics or uh, uh, surgeries or things, so uh, a lot of salves and teas uh, uh, were made, uh, and uh, it was used some for depression, uh, some psychiatric uh, uh, treatment, uh, medical side effects were of no concern because the illnesses themselves were so serious they had nothing else they could use. So the Romans used a lot of uh, uh, medical uh, marijuana. Interestingly enough, uh, this book that I have here, The Health Effects of Cannabis and, and Cannabinoids, talks about the health and summarizes uh, the, the uh, health effects, and it's not that effective. Yeah. Uh, matter of fact, uh, they found it effective for some pain some uh, pain problems, okay? And I've seen patients who, who have used it and they feel that pain is better. I mean, you wanted the psychoactive effect, uh, but actually the effect uh, uh, could be, uh, it's like CBD uh, it itself doesn't stimulate receptors, but what it does is we in our own bodies have in the, the CB1 and CB2 receptors, receptors, that's where chemicals act. Chemicals act by opening the door to the cell by hitting a receptor. It, it has been determined now that we have CB1 receptors, and those are receptors all over the brain. They're a little bit over the body too. CB2 receptors, which are mainly in the legs and arms, but also in the liver and the heart. And uh, uh, so there is a system uh, of receptors uh, where marijuana can, uh, can act, but other uh, drugs can affect uh, uh, that too, uh, even some effects in depression. But what this book, Health Effects of Cannabinoids, uh, that uh, Academy of Science report says, it helps some for pain, but the people taking it forgot, because I, I want you to remember, I'm going to uh, tell you about shortly, is it is not without risk. They act like it's riskless. It is not. Uh, that it can help the nausea of cancer, but the other drugs for that. You don't need to take it for that. 
uh, and uh, thirdly, it reduces the spasticity, the, the, the uh, tension uh, and the jumpiness you can get with multiple sclerosis. I treat a lot of those patients, but again, other drugs work for that. You don't necessarily need to uh, use marijuana or CBD for that. That's the only three they found any amount of scientific evidence. The other things that you hear about schizophrenia to stop smoking, depression, all these things, the evidence is very, very limited. I mean, they sort of act like it can cure everything. No, it, uh, uh, it can't. Now, I'll tell you the reason uh, why I'm, I'm, uh, I brought it up, why I, I want you, after watching this show today, that you understand uh, uh, some of the risks involved. Let me review one of them. The main one to me is that CBD, okay, uh, which can be uh, ingested or you can use as a lozenger, you can vape it, uh, yeah, uh, inhale it that way, or smoke it or put it under your tongue or on your skin or, or swallow it. Uh, the science of that I'll discuss in more de detail after a bit. Uh, but CBD uh, tur turns off part of the P450 enzyme in the liver. And that cytochrome 450 enzyme's job is to detoxify the body. Yeah. You use CBD oil and you're on, say, a few medications, maybe a blood thinner, uh, maybe a diabetic medication, maybe a heart medication, maybe a thyroid medication. There, there are numerous medications. I can't name them uh, all here. Uh, they don't even know all of them. Uh, that the, that this, since the P450 enzyme isn't working as good because you smoked, vaped, or put it on your tongue, the, the CBD oil, it doesn't detoxify the drugs that you are already taking. The state law has no warnings on about that. Uh, and that can be deadly. It could harm you, it could kill you. Can you imagine you're taking warfarin uh, for a heart thing and all of a sudden, because of the lack of, of degrading or getting rid of that enzyme uh, through the liver, it is either upgraded, more effective or less effective. It's very clear. Uh, it could harm you or kill you. You know, they'll say, marijuana never killed anybody. Baloney, 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 or, or, or CBD, uh, because, uh, if you're on any uh, medications, uh, or it could be upgraded or downgraded. It could be a killer. You're not warned about that. You go to the gas station. Can you imagine somebody driving down the road, goes to the gas station, buys this oil, puts it on, they're driving down the road, they're on four or five different medications, and, and they don't have that P450 enzyme. They could have a sudden heart attack. Uh, they get in an accident, and they don't have proper blood clotting uh, because the, P450 enzyme turned this off. This is critical. It's not mentioned in the discussion. I even saw a Medic Society article. There were two of them in there, a three-month fault-way medical thing, and the first article didn't mention it at all. And the second one did mention the enzyme, but didn't say how critical it was for you to know that. Uh, uh, it's very important. The second thing uh, uh, that it does is called the entourage effect. When you take CBD, as many other chemicals in it. First of all, the, chem the testing of it, and that's in books. I get the books right here. That is only 26% reliable. Mm -hmm. There are a few companies in England that are more reliable, but that's not what's occurring. Uh, what you're buying in, in most of the businesses uh, today, you don't know the reliability of the testing. State law says it has to have a label on it as a manufacturer, okay? All right. And then, the, then it has to have under... Uh, the testing company, the manufacturer picked. <laughs> you think it's open up to fraud? I think so, because you don't know all the testing companies. A few of us know who the better ones are, but the public doesn't know. They innocently go in there and buy the product uh, and smoke it or vape it or put it on their skin or use it as a salve or whatever, uh, or under their tongue as a spray. Uh, and they don't know about the P450. Uh, they don't know uh, uh, about that hasn't been properly tested. Let me tell you another one. It's easily available online that you can convert. If you Google convert 
CBD to THC, the psychoactive component, plantia information available. I saw one of the sites had a million hits. So what do you think kids are going to do? Remember, state of Indiana law, no age limit. Some, some uh, businesses may have on their age limit. They'll say, well, I don't sell it to little kids. Okay, I've heard them say that to me by the two that I checked. Uh, uh, for example, uh, they had no, no age limit on it. Uh, uh, and, and they upgraded, they heated to THC. Now they're high. No wonder they feel better if they get a, 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 a pain problem, uh, for example. So you see my, my, my problem with it, the P450, the, the lack of reliable testing, uh, that you can heat it. And there are other things too, but those are the main things I say to you uh, that potentially not safe, okay? Uh, and uh, so let's continue on this road and I'll re repeat what, what, I, what I said. So, uh, uh, so what I'm s saying is that a lack of warnings is really concerns me. In 1753, Linnaeus uh, uh, is the one who put the name cannabis sativa. He, uh, he uh, named the species. Lamarck in 1783 uh, uh, spoke about uh, the marijuana indica coming from India. They were using it. Uh, a lot more there, but the indica is much higher in THC, the psychoactive uh, component. Uh, 1833, O'Shaughnessy brought through the British East India Company, brought it uh, to uh, England, uh, and, and they started using it more commonly at that time, you know, even for ropes and sails and medications and, and religious ceremonies uh, would use it because you get a high. Baths would have it, again, because, hey, I'm in heaven. I've had my, my marijuana or I've had some of the uh, creams. So, uh, uh, and they've experimented with it. It does increase the appetite. Uh, and, and speaking about, let's, let's talk a minute about the children using it. William Bennett's book is very good about going to, to a pot there. It has been scientifically established now that child's brain is not fully developed till age 25, okay? And they found if children uh, smoke uh, marijuana regularly, it causes brain damage. It puts holes in the brain and it never recovers. Yeah, yeah. Been proven by MRI. I've seen the MRIs. This is real. And what can happen, you take a brilliant child, you can make an average. You can take an average child you can make them retarded. Real neurologic damage can be caused by, mar by marijuana. If a child drinks alcohol regularly, uh, smokes, uses marijuana, 80% chance they'll be a drug addict. Statistically proven. Statistically proven. That's why I'm so afraid in this state. What are we doing? Uh, we brought in CBD. Next year, the legislature will consider medicinal marijuana. Uh, Remember what I said from this book, from Academy of Sciences? It has very little medicinal effect. And, and, uh, and I've reviewed the, the experience of Colorado, California, Washington, Oregon, Alaska, Washington, D.C., who's next, uh, Indiana, uh, Illinois, and Ohio, and Michigan, the medicinal marijuana now. Uh, uh, and uh, review those websites, 300 pages of review from Colorado. Uh, and, and uh, well, it's the tax money. Well, let me tell you something. I read about that. In Colorado, it's 26% 20% tax, local, state, uh, surtax. Uh, but the trouble is most people are only paying 2% because they'll claim that they have pain and you get a medical card, then the tax is only 2%. So every time they can hurry pain or not pain to get it uh, cheap, I heard, what's the level of your pain? It's a nine, here's your medical marijuana card. That's what's happening in Colorado. Also, it's expensive, uh, significant. You can spend hundreds a month um, uh, on it. And uh, uh, what's, ha what's happened, uh, that in California, <coughs> a lot of people are growing their own plants to avoid the tax. Matter of fact, the percentage growing the plants versus buying it taxed at a store 
I, I couldn't almost believe the figure. I mean, 80 uh, percent as privately grown. Uh, I, I, I don't want to be quoted on that, but I, I read the figure was even higher than that. Uh, so the state doesn't get the money, the city doesn't get it, the locals don't get it. Uh, and, and in California, the tax can be as high as 45 percent uh, if you add up the city, the county, the state, the surtax, uh, and all. Of course, as medical costs, there are complications occurring. Some people are growing their own stuff and using butane to extract uh, the chemicals, TAC, uh, from it, and the house is exploding. That's happened. In Colorado, it's happened 30 times. All of a sudden, the house explodes. So, uh, yes, serious. Uh, so he says, marijuana never killed anybody. Baloney, baloney, uh, baloney. Uh, so uh, to make a lot of money taxing it, they'll name this huge figure, but they don't total up the, me the, me the medical costs. The cost of a, a person waking up has a smoke and says, oh, I don't think I'll go to work today. I'm feeling so good. I don't go to school today because I'm feeling just great. That happens. It hits the workforce. I understand from three college students had it sitting with me at a local university, 30% at least of the kids are smoking marijuana. Yeah, what do you think that's gonna to lead to? Probably not something very well. And uh, so uh, alcohol as an intoxicant started about 6,000 years ago uh, and opium a thousand years uh, later. And then remember I said marijuana uh, came along uh, perhaps at, at the earliest, and then, uh, then they also developed hashish, which is taking the flowery plant and really concentrating the, uh, the flower. It was used for religious purposes uh, uh, many uh, uh, years ago. Uh, in 1700, Marco Polo uh, described it uh, in a book, A, a Thousand Nights. Uh, so there was a, a story, many stories in there about uh, marijuana uh, uh, in that book. And Napoleon, 1798, uh, had his troops in Egypt and they got into it. And remember it came from, from the East Asia and the East and the, eventually worked its way to England and then to the United States. Nap Napoleon outlawed it. His, his, his troops were using it. Uh, he couldn't get them to work. Uh, and uh, he, he uh, outlawed it. Uh, so, uh, uh, the Chinese were using it to make paper. And, uh, uh, and the first time they ever saw, saw marijuana probably yeah, is that in Taiwan, they were using it as fiber to decorate pots. Oh, pots? <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, they were using it to decorate. Maybe, maybe that's where the term came from, okay. <laughs> and, uh, and then the Vikings around 1850, uh, and the Chinese were the first ones to use it uh, uh, medically. So uh, that's been an interesting uh, story uh, uh, in the, hi in the uh, history of it, uh, frankly. Uh, let me speak a little bit more about the endocannabinoid receptors. So we have these, remember I spoke about the CB1 receptors uh, more over the brain. The, Remember, the receptors are these things sticking up, that, and they're on cells, okay? And if you hit a receptor, that's the key that opens the door to send the message to the cell. So chemicals are key openers, like insulin, will take sugar, hit the receptor, opens the cell to bring in sugar and, and oxygen to make ATP your energy molecule, okay? And remember, I spoke to it a little bit. I'd like to remind you a little bit about Candid Pert's work. Uh, she is 1971. I got a hold of that book, which totally changed my world. And I have a summary uh, of her work. Anybody wants it, uh, look me up at one of my lectures. I'll give you a, a copy. Or at the pharmacy where I see people for free on Friday mornings like I did today. The research of Candace Pert, PhD, she discovered the, these receptors. Uh, and really changed all of medicine, but I'm, I'm unhappy to say that her work still is not taught much at the medical school, if at all. Uh, but that's how our brain, through neuropeptides, neurotransmitters, hormones, speaks to our body. 
Our Army, Navy, Air Force, our immunity makes the same darn thing, speaks back to, to our brain, but that's, that's like the, what she's talking about here. They hadn't discovered them yet, but really she's talking about receptors. Now I'm speaking about CB1, CB2 receptors, CB2 more through the body, although CB1s are partly over the body uh, 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 also. Uh, and, and she calls them information molecules. Okay, uh, so uh, these, we ourselves have these CB1, CD receptors all over the body, uh, okay? Uh, they're there for a reason. Our body doesn't create something unless it has a use. So our own body makes endo of cells. Remember you hear about the word endorphins that were discovered three years after Ken Pert's work uh, that make it feel great. You exercise and you feel wonderful. You sing a song. That's your endorphins at work. Laughter brings them out also. Uh, uh, and they, they now know who the chemicals are that we make uh, endocannabinoids that hit our receptors. They're called ANA, anodyne, ANA, and 2AG. These we make ourselves. And the way CBD works, CBD uh, destroys the enzyme that detoxifies or metabolizes in the liver, ANA, 2AG, our own endocannabinoid, because CBD doesn't allow them to be deactivated. So they last longer, the level is higher, and we feel better longer. So what's the effect of CBD? I'm in heaven, I feel wonderful. That could be how, how it works, one reason. The second reason can be uh, because uh, uh, depending on our method of how we take it in, heats it, uh, like smoking or vaping, gets it up to 300 uh, uh, degrees. Vaping, incidentally, uh, about 90% uh, of what we're vaping is absorbed. Yeah. Smoking, only about 20%. And smoking, you know, can cause lung cancer. They haven't totally proven it in, with marijuana, but they're very suspicious because it has so many other chemicals you take in uh, that odds are cancer also is connected to it. That's the way the literature reads uh, right now. Uh, so uh, the uh, CBD, you could say, increases our cannabinoid tone. Is that what gives you the good feeling? Like I said, that's fine. You get this pain here and there, and, and I'm in heaven. I feel, I, feel, I feel great. My pain is much better, but you got to remember the P450 effect where you don't uh, catabolize, metabolize the other drugs you may be taking. Their interaction has not been studied, not been well studied. Uh, and and uh, uh, that could harm you, that could kill you. That's my, my main ob objection. So let's talk about CB1 receptors a little bit, where they're located in your brain, the hippocampus. Okay, the medial uh, temporal lobe, would involve, that involves learning, memory, stress, okay? Hypothalamus, uh, the wizard of Oz of your brain, size of a silver dollar at the base of your brain that affects sleep and relaxation and, and eating and appetite. The limbic system, anxiety, uh, full of CB1 uh, receptors. The cortex, cognition, memory, frontal lobe effect, planning. Uh, it, the concentrated in the nucleus are Q bands. That's a very small site in the posterior frontal lobe where most of your dopamine uh, is made and dis distributed. You know, you smoke a cigarette, bango, nucleus of Q bands lights up. A drink of alcohol will do it. Laughter might do it. Exercise might do it. That's the dopamine. The dopamine center uh, has CB1 receptors. So CBD, again, can hurt that. So there are uh, uh, effects. It's, remember, it's a side effects I'm concerned about. Uh, the basal ganglia in the middle of the brain, the medulla, uh, more uh, where the spinal cord enters uh, the brain is the medulla right there. It affects nausea and vomiting. So it, with a cancer patient, uh, it could reduce nausea and vomiting. And if they, uh, it's supposed the cancer patient is taking uh, chemotherapy drugs. Remember what I said about 
C CBD interferes P450 with the metabolism also of your cancer drugs. It may upgrade them, it may downgrade them. It may kill you either way. Either they don't work or they work too much. So that's dangerous. The other drugs you could take for nausea and vomiting. Uh, so it has effects on the immune system. Your own immunity, your macrophages, monocytes, T cells, thymus, uh, uh, also bone metabolism uh, uh, affected. So it can uh, downregulate regulate it, upregulate it. And after taking these oils, uh, marijuana, uh, medicinal marijuana or marijuana uh, over, over time, uh, uh, you can become tolerant to it. Your receptors die. So you need to take more drug to get the effect, uh, uh, to get the effect. Uh, and, uh, and I noticed Canada legalized marijuana the other day. And I wonder if they're ready for what's coming down the line and, uh, and concerned about uh, uh, people bringing it to other states and countries and obviously that's gonna happen. And uh, uh, so, so let's talk about uh, four main ways uh, that uh, CBD, medical marijuana, marijuana can affect, uh, it, it can enter your body and affect your body. One, two, inhalation. You know, you can breathe it. Uh, you can vape it. Remember, uh, that's, the, so you mainly taking the, the uh, uh, smoke. It's 90% uh, will uh, enter uh, 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 your blood system uh, that way. Uh, uh, and uh, it, it, it takes, shorter period of time for it to be effective, maybe 30 minutes, uh, maybe quicker, uh, versus ingestion. We'll talk about that. Uh, and, 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 and smoking, only 20% of the chemicals uh, uh, affect you. Usually they heat it 320 to 360. Smoking, uh, uh, so there's a difference between smoking and vaping, but that's the method a lot of people use. A lot of people now are putting it also under their uh, tongue or using sprays because the mucosa is very thin. It's rapidly absorbed, but if they're rapidly absorbed, it doesn't last as long, hour and a half maybe, okay? Versus swallowing, it may last six, six hours, uh, for example. Uh, so, uh, and if be, vaping can be pretty quick, uh, f 15 minutes maybe, yeah. And, uh, and last about 60 to uh, uh, 90 minutes. Uh, other ways, of course, to ingest in these products uh, is drinking, eating, swallowing, tincture. Uh, and and uh, uh, that way, it may take an hour or so. Uh, if you take it by mouth, uh, then it has to go through the GI tract, uh, and it may be partially metabolized there. And then it has to do something called the first pass effect. That's your liver. It has to go through the metabolism of the liver and CBD is, uh, becomes 85% ineffective. Only 15% uh, becomes uh, effective at that point. Uh, and uh, also, of course, it'll have much more immediate effects uh, on the P450 enzyme, which I think you know by now uh, uh, is trouble. Interestingly enough, THC is metabolized also uh, in, in the plant if, if, if you're eating it. Uh, and it's changed to 11 hyphen uh, OH hyphen THC. It's much stronger than regular THC. You're gonna get a, a heck of a high. Uh, but again, uh, it, it's partially metabolized, so isn't as much of it, but the, the one that doesn't make it through goes to 11 uh, OH THC, and the effect is much higher. Uh, but the effect from the edibles, maybe six hours or so, uh, uh, and it become effective maybe 30 minutes, an hour, some take longer. Uh, so uh, third method is the mucous membrane absorption, nose, mouth, uh, suppositories as uh, rectum too. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, people use sprays or mist, uh, usually about 30 minutes uh, before the uh, uh, work and last about two to three hours. No pass, no pass effect, doesn't go through the uh, liver first. Uh, so th there are slow ways and, and, and fast ways. And, other, and the fourth way is applying it to the skin. 
mixed with a lot of times with other chemicals, camphor, menthol, capacin. Uh, so it, it, it can uh, react with them. Less likely to have side effects, you might say. But you know, uh, I had some shoulder pain about a year ago, and, and I used uh, an Advil cream type cream, uh, author cream, I think it was called. And I forget all is in it, but you know, after a week of using it, I start passing blood. Huh? What happened? Knocked out the P450 enzyme or some others. It wasn't detoxifying, and I stopped the medicine. That stopped right away. Uh, I've uh, seen it uh, uh, with after two weeks with uh, Advil, but when I took, remember, I t took the grapefruit. Took the grapefruit. It was the next day. That's the P450 effect, uh, and uh, uh, but the smoking is the most common method. People seem to be uh, using it, and uh, the uh, CBD or marijuana of today is completely different than the marijuana of yesterday. Yeah, yeah. So m many different trees grown today. Uh, uh, have different combinations of CBD uh, uh, and uh, THC. They have now approved uh, Epidilox, made by a company in uh, Britain, uh, made from a tree, from a marijuana tree. It's a 100% CBD, can be used for seizures legally. You need a prescription, okay? Uh, best you know, it doesn't seem to cause a high. It's not awful funny if that one doesn't give a high, but you, you buy the product over the counter, uh, retail shops, it seems to, oh, I'm in heaven, which makes you think they have the entourage effect. That's called the entourage effect of the interaction of the other chemicals in CBD, uh, which can be up to 100 or so. Small amounts, the main things are always CBD or THC, but small amounts is the interaction, the entourage has a totally unpredictable effect. And because they're plants, uh, it's not as predictable because, because of rain or fertilizer, sunshine or whatever, plants are different. You can have the same species and, and every plant have a different content of CBD, THC, been proven. So if testing is not good, you don't know what you're taking. You don't know what the right dose is. You, you may take that. You may take that amount you always took, a uh, uh, vapor, what you always vaped, and this time you pass out. Uh, so, uh, and, and I want you to read some of these books, learn more about the health effects uh, from, can you imagine you're smoking this uh, and you're pregnant, for example, okay? Uh, uh, it is fat soluble. Uh, uh, marijuana is, fa is fat soluble, stays in the body for a long period of, of time. Uh, and maybe even smoking it, and all of a sudden you find out uh, uh, you're, pre you're pregnant. Oh, I'm not going to smoke while I'm pregnant, but it's already in you, in your fat stores. It's going to affect uh, the little developing uh, infant, uh, and it's absorbed, incidentally, through the umbilicus. So anyone uh, smoking marijuana or using medical marijuana or using CBD, uh, and, and they're pregnant, it's going to affect that infant. Infant indeed are born today addicted to uh, marijuana effects of CBD. Some are retarded, some have uh, uh, cancer. Alcohol uh, uh, can do the same, opioids uh, do the same. Uh, so remember, you can, through epigenetics, affect it, that, that infant in there uh, in their whole life by increasing cancer rates. Some may uh, be, be retarded, some may have uh, brain damage uh, because of what you're doing, alcohol, mar uh, uh, marijuana, uh, 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 CBD. I mean, they, these have real effects. This is not imaginary. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and some of these products you see have different colors and, and different aromas. Uh, that's because uh, they have in them terpenes, T-R-P-N-S. Uh, they are the ones that give the aroma and the color to it. Otherwise, pure CBD, pure THC has no odor, okay? It has odor to it, got some terpene in it, but that also has effects on your uh, neurotransmitters. Uh, uh, and uh, so uh, I repeat again, uh, CBD labeling is notoriously inaccurate, inaccurate. So what you're consuming, 
uh, just taking a chance, okay? Uh, uh, and, 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 uh, and some of these solvents and extracts that you can use can have 60 to 90% uh, cannabinoids. Uh, but again, what the, it says there, you can't really rely on it. And uh, so, and, and, and I already mentioned, uh, vaping and smoking is much higher temperatures, which will convert uh, some of the CBD to THC. And if you have a teenager buying it over the counter, uh, and, and, and probably is doing that to, to get us high. And, and you say, what, what's, what's next? And uh, putting it under your tongue, tinctures, is a pretty rapid onset because it hits the bloodstream right away. Incidentally, it's 75% alcohol. So you're gonna have some alcohol uh, effects. So, and, uh, so again, uh, what, what we uh, spoke uh, about is the high danger uh, of uh, we moving now uh, in the state of Indiana by the legislature, the Senate, the House, and, uh, and our governor. Are they signing this, the bill they signed already without warnings? Anybody uh, uh, can buy it. Uh, they don't speak about the P450 effect uh, at all, uh, okay? They don't care? Lack of knowledge? Lobbying money? I don't know. I've been interested in your idea. You often to talk to me about it. I'm just trying to get information out to you. I encourage you to read these books. I've read, but I'm up to 10 books, 100 scientific papers. Uh, uh, talk to me. Uh, I do go to some meetings and some letters to the editor. People write back at me. Doesn't bother me. Doesn't bother me, but the majority of these people are sellers. And you get to watch out for it. There are pyramids out there. Yeah, I even know some doctors doing it. I know some doctors' wives doing it. I know some employees in the office doing it. Uh, the other day, my wife said she saw a white Jeep with the name of the selling company on it. it said CBD oil. What do you think? Does Mary Kay mean anything to you? They used to hand out cars to people who sell a lot. That's the pyramid. The further up, the, the more you sell, see, the, the next salesman has to pay you a certain amount of money, and the next one, the next one. That's a pyramid. They're very common, and you have to watch out for them because uh, you think their motivation is good health? Maybe a few, but let's face it. The almighty dollar goes, goes a long way. And, and if you are not informed, could be fatal. And it, 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 you don't think so? Well, st I have a book coming called uh, P450, just the whole book. I've read many articles on it, but now I'm getting a whole book on the darn thing. I'm going to be an expert on it, and I'll be on this uh, 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 as long as uh, my knowledge can, can, can gather to let you know uh, of the danger. You know, I'm a doctor, I mean, it's a physician. Uh, incidentally, any of you have pain problems, addiction problems, or type 2 diabetes you want to get rid of, uh, uh, call the Three Rivers Farming, Sheila, 373-1083. Uh, I see people there for free Friday mornings, like I did today. It's a labor of love. Uh, and I have many patients who've gotten rid of their addictions, who've gotten uh, rid of their type 2 diabetes. Not that hard, frankly. Uh, and I teach it. And, uh, and, and I teach it all the time. Uh, so other safety issues are, are edible. So, some people are, are giving it to their dog to reduce anxiety. Well, puts them asleep. Okay, I can see the point. But some dogs take medication too. Uh, uh, what's the dose to take for a dog? Uh, it's ne necessarily uh, easy. Some of the vets, I'm sure, are, are selling them already. Uh, but the metabolism is different. Could you kill your pet? Uh, with CBD edible? Heck yes, you could. Uh, do some kids get into the uh, uh, edibles or oils you're using? Of course they do. That's happened many times. Uh, some are found unconscious, uh, and I suspect some worse things than that are going to happen. So you got to watch out for the pets. You got to watch out uh, for your children get into grandma's or, or yours uh, medicine cabinet, which could be any medicine that you might be taking. Uh, but it's more likely to happen if you're eating it as uh, edibles or candies or uh, whatever. 
Uh, and the, the pregnancy issue, of course, is a big one. I mean, that's a big one because uh, uh, let me review a little bit the uh, Indiana State Department of Toxicology. Yeah. You can go to their website, Sheila Arnold, uh, and she puts out this uh, uh, PowerPoint. I may review uh, a part of it, which she presented mainly to lawyers. I wanted her to be in a TV show or give a lecture, and I didn't seem to get much response. You know what her answer to me was? I need to speak to my supervisor, and he will need to speak to the governor. Did that tell you anything? A wonderful lady, very nice to me on the phone. But I'm concerned. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't think so. My phone is still silent. Maybe she sent a message I didn't get, didn't get it. Uh, but I, but uh, to, to have a toxicologist on it. And wh what does she say? Let's review her PowerPoint here a little bit. Uh, she talks about Epidiolox, which is from a plant for seizure disorder, but Dravet syndrome, uh, a very rare seizure condition. I mean rarer than heck. I was a neurologist, neurosurgeon. I never saw a case. Uh, so very rare, uh, okay? Uh, then she, uh, and, but epidiolox also can cause uh, drowsiness, sedation, lethargy, fatigue, irritability, agitation. It has, also has side effects. But then, uh, then she says epidiolox lacks the entourage effect the interaction with other drugs because it's pretty pure, okay? 99% CBD, okay? Still may have a small amount of THC though, but commercially available, this is what she says, commercially available CBD oil is a different story. And she lists all the other cannabinoids that, that are uh, in there besides THC and CBD, and their interaction, entourage effect is not predictable. It's different from every plant. She's concerned about that. And then she says, information on conversion of CBD to THC is readily available on the internet site. I already told you that. So there's a danger of people just taking this all, converting to THC, um, uh, if, if they uh, want to use their own extractions, the house may explode, and it has. Look, look at the Colorado uh, experience. Matter of fact, the governor of Colorado has said, and I read it, has said, you know, he was a politician running for public office, uh, and, uh, and he was saying, you know, he was, if I'm budding a bit, and then he finally, I heard him say it, he finally said, ah, oh, the heck with it. I'm going to speak the truth. It was a mistake. I heard him say it. Mm -hmm. Look it up on the internet. You can find it. I, I heard him say it. Let's Indiana not make the mistake. So talk to your congressman. And if you need a copy of, uh, I wrote this summary to the, for the Medical Society Bulletin, page and a half with all these references uh, and more, talking about the 450 and the entourage effect and all that. If you want a copy of that, uh, stop by the Three Rivers Pharmacy. Uh, Sheila there will give you a copy. I gave her permission. Uh, uh, so you'll be uh, fully informed. I made 100 copies. I've given away 10 already today. <laughs> and, and, uh, uh, because uh, make up your own mind, uh, but uh, you know, Doctor uh, means uh, educator. And then she speaks uh, about uh, the uh, CB450 interaction with other drugs, including uh, morphine, hydromorphone, methadone, heroin. And, she f and, and if you have taken the CBD oil and have turned off the P450 enzyme, the effect can quadruple. I think codeine was 20 times as effective if I read that right, but anything multiplies the effectiveness, kind of like my grapefruit story where the, uh, where the medication I was taking uh, uh, caused bleeding, boom, uh, one day, one, one day. She speaks a lot about that. So I think it's an excellent PowerPoint, but I think she probably has her hands locked a little bit, handcuffed a bit uh, with her boss uh, and, and maybe the governor uh, because, uh, the phone still hasn't rung. Maybe, maybe she sent me an email and I didn't get it. I don't know. But, but uh, uh, meanwhile, I'll be uh, on the television and lectures that I give uh, and uh, speak about it in, in, in consultations, trying to keep you uh, informed. Uh, and uh, so uh, the problems can be serious. 
So I I if you want to read a little more about the CB450, let me read the uh, website to you, www.projectcbd.org, org, org, slash, article, slash, CBD, CBD hyphen drug, hyphen interactions, uh, hyphen role, hyphen cytochrome, hyphen P450. There you will read the science of what I've been drilling home to you today. <laughs> I know you've heard so much of it, but that's what's going to harm you or kill you, and I love you, so <laughs> sorry about that. And, uh, and uh, I might take a minute, since we get a couple of minutes left, a little bit about Candace Pert's work, because when we speak about the CB1 and the CB2 uh, receptor, uh, her research preceded it, uh, a, a bit, uh, but uh, I have a copy, a summary of her research instead of reading her book, Molecules of Emotion. I will have this available also at the Three Rivers Pharmacy. Sheila will make you a, a, a copy, about six, seven pages, and you will then understand the mind-body connection, which is an extremely important part of our health. Uh, uh, stress and, uh, and, and, and depression and pain, uh, and you'll learn about receptors because CB1 and CB2 is about receptors throughout the body. Do I think down the line th there could be tremendous benefits to a proper research on those receptors? Yes, yes, but it's hard to do because of federal law restricting the research. I think the pharmaceutical companies are stopping that. Uh, because uh, products you develop from, plant, from plants, I, uh, uh, they can't own them, okay? Uh, yeah. And that's a problem. Uh, so then they're going to money, they're going to stop the laws on that, uh, uh, which is sad. But some research is still occurring, uh, especially in foreign countries, in England, uh, for example. Um, so the companies that make recommendations are a, a, a bit more reliable. Uh, 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 but I don't read much about the, the P450 enzyme there, but I, I think their research uh, is a bit uh, reliable. And uh, uh, so uh, this, uh, what Candace Pert did is, is, I'll read from her a, a little bit, is taking a giant step towards shattering some sheriff's beliefs held sacred by Western scientists for more than two centuries. You see, uh, for centuries, we believed in the mind-body connection, okay? Uh, but uh, Rene Descartes uh, in the uh, 1600s needed to do autopsies and study the human body. Uh, and church would not give permission, okay? Wouldn't give him permission. So what, what he, in essence, uh, uh, did is cut the head off the body, gave it to the church, so all emotions and psychiatry and all those things. Uh, the church, that was their property, and the body was given to medicine. So for 300 years, we've been dissecting this human body and not thinking about the mind-body connection and these receptors. So to read about her and educate yourself about her, it really will increase your knowledge. <laughs> Thanks so much for listening uh, today. I think I, I really feel like giving you some, quite a bit of insight. Uh, you can go to YouTube uh, and, and uh, see other shows I have on this, and this will be on, on uh, Public Access, Comcast 57, next Wednesday at 6, and the following Wednesday at 6, and I'll make a sh uh, DVD out of it, put it on CashmanHealth.com website on Facebook. You can watch it again uh, there. Uh, uh, I did this because I care about you. I, I, I think uh, our government will not save us from this. We must step up to bat, maybe find out the guy you're going to vote for. Uh, what's he thinking about this? Is he just taking in the lobbying money? Or uh, does he understand the science? Uh, uh, so, and you can use me as a source of information. Maybe just this one page thing I sent to the state society that you can pick up at the pharmacy with one and a half pages uh, and give that to, the, to your congressman or senator or whatever, I think it'd be a great uh, value. Uh, 
uh, actually the guy above took care of this morning when the main uh, manager of our local congressman uh, was at Starbucks. <laughs>